Welcome back to our last day of Becoming a Spy. We have had so much fun this week making all sorts of tools to be spy-tastic, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it with us. And today is our Friday paper circuits type of day, which means we are gonna do an awesome paper circuit project that has to do with spies. We're gonna make a little Morse code um, instrument that can send out Morse code with light today, and you'll be able to learn what Morse code is. I'm gonna go over real quick what we need to make the project and then we'll get to our shout out. So if you want a shout out, make sure you type your name in the comments and Evan will let me know that you are here, which makes me excited. Um, and if you don't have all your supplies, you'll have a chance to run and go grab those supplies. So you need a printout. This guy was should have been in your email earlier. It looks kind of like a house with a little paper circuit and then a piece below it. I printed it on cardstock paper. If you printed it on really loose paper, you might wanna get a cereal box that you could trace around this so that you could still make it and still have a template, but it'd be just a little bit stiffer. Or you could try with just paper and see how that works. We're gonna need scissors to cut it out. We are gonna need a pencil that's kind of sharp so that we can poke some holes in there. You'll need some non-conductive tape, so like a masking tape or a scotch tape will work really well. And then for our circuit part, you need copper tape, which um, you can find at a hardware store. You're gonna need a coin cell battery. These are CR2032 batteries. You can find them at grocery stores and hardware stores. And then you need an LED, which is a light emitting diode. And you can find these at places like Walmart. And you're gonna wanna check and make sure your battery and your LED work. And I'll show you guys how to do that after we get to our shout outs. Let's see who's with us. All right. Who do we have today? Today, first up, a while ago. A while ago, probably George. When I checked at 9.30, they were in there. Oh my goodness. Naomi. Naomi, whoa. Holy moly, hello, Naomi. I'm glad you're with us today for some circuits. And I am pretty sure that after Naomi was Kelly. Hello, Kelly. And Kelly's probably in our Zoom classroom. If you have parents who do not want you on YouTube all by yourselves, which I totally understand, you can always go into our Zoom classroom. You'll get the live feed, so you can still ask questions, but it's a much safer environment. And to get the Zoom link, that's in your, it's on our Patreon page. And if you haven't gone there yet, it's patreon.com slash Rosie Research. And it's like a dollar a week, so a cup of coffee a month. And we also have John. Hi, John. Zoom. And maybe Ellie. Maybe Ellie. Uh, not in the picture, Aww. but he's there. Hello, John. And then we got George and Henry saying Yay, hi. hello, George and Henry. How are you boys today? And Mr. Abel is Yay! here. Yay, hi, Abel. We had the pleasure of running to, into Abel on the trails yesterday. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We haven't found the 3D printing thing yet, the Enigma book. Oh, yeah. Good luck. I need to send that. Uh, Orion's here. Hey, Orion. He noticed that uh, the tadpole was trying to escape. Yeah, I think we're going to need to release our tadpole slash frogs at this point because they're pretty much frogs. I think they're going to get released this weekend. So this will be our last day in Zoom with Tiny Dancer. Say goodbye. I know. He also said Spy Week is so amazing. Yay, I'm glad. I hope next week's going to be really fun too. Although we are not meeting on Monday for Memorial Day. So we'll have four electric projects next week. They are pretty cool. Uh, we have... Rohan here. Hello, Rohan. And he also loves some Spy Week. Yes! This has been such a fun week. Oh my goodness, I've had such a good time. And Setting up dead drops around our house is amazing. And I see that Kaya is already here, which is Yay. awesome. Yay! Hello, Kaya! I'm glad you're here because it's our last day with Tiny. And we have Lily who's asking, Ooh, hi, where Lily. is the template? I'll put the link in Evan, chat for you. Evan will get the link in chat for you and you guys will get that template. Perfect. Yes. Um, be easy. And it looks like that's what we have for awesome. signings right now, but feel free to check in later. Fantastic. All right, Lily, since you're going to be waiting on a link and hit print, you might actually want to hit pause. And that way, when you come back, you'll be able to just like go right on through with us. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is actually we'll check our LED. We'll test it. And if this is your first time doing circuits with us, there are four ways to attach an LED to a battery and only one of them will work. So I could hold my battery up and I could just take my LED and put both legs on the top and nothing happens. I could put both legs on the bottom and also nothing happens. I could also put one leg on the top and one leg on the bottom like this so that I have like the battery and squishing it between the two LED legs. 
You'll notice this time nothing happens also, which might be surprising because the battery has the chemical reaction to let charges go to create a circuit. Um, and so you might be looking at it and being like, well, they could come out of the top of the battery, go through the LED and go into the bottom. We have this nice circular circuit and it should work, but it doesn't. And that's because LEDs are one-way streets. So if you look at your LED, there's one leg that's long and one leg that's short. And the long leg needs to go on top and the short leg goes on bottom and it will light up for us. So we want to test our LEDs first and make sure that those work for us. All right. And once it works, then we know that anytime that the LED is not working in our circuit, it's something that we've done with the wiring because we know if we attach it directly to the battery that it should work. So the LED works and the battery works. All right, so now that we've tested, we are ready to get going. Yes, question. Naomi would like to mention that her mom made a dead drop out of a book Ooh. that she cut all the pages out of. So it was a box and she put it back on the bookshelf, <gasps> which yes. is amazing. Oh my gosh, Naomi, you have like the best mom ever. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, yes. Has, I, I'm curious if Naomi's gotten to use her dead drop yet. Oh, um, she can let us know. All right, we're going to cut around these solid lines on our template. So it will ultimately look, this piece will look like a house, kind of. So you're going to have one big piece. We're not going to cut on these dotted lines. The dotted lines are for folding. So we're just going to cut these solid lines. One will look like a house, and then you'll notice there's a rectangle below it that will also cut out. So we'll have two pieces at the end of this and just two pieces. So we're just gonna cut around this line as best as we can. And this is gonna make, at the end, we'll be able to fold this into like this nice little wedge-shaped box, which is kind of cool. I can't believe a dead drop out of a book. I've always wanted to do that, but it seems so hard to cut all the pages the right way so that you still have pages on the outside, but not on the, like, because it still has to look like a normal book. I know. That's 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 the tricky part. That's very spy-esque. Your mom might be a spy. Ooh, Sorry, Naomi. True story. Don't turn Sorry. around. Sorry. I think it'd be super cool if your parents were a spy. I would be a fan. All right. So here is one piece. Notice I did not cut on the dotted lines. Just this out sort of outline that looks like a house. Then I'm also going to cut out this rectangle. And this rectangle is going to tell me how to make each letter in Morse code. Because Morse is a code, which means that you can't just write the letter A, we have to have a set of symbols or signals to use the A. All Kaya, right. Kaya just mentioned that she hopes we can do science this summer. I know, we're got, we gotta figure out our science plan this summer. Cause we only have three more weeks until we would have been out of school. So we're gonna think it? about what we're gonna do, is I know. It? I think that's it. It's kind of all right, so you can put your little rectangle coding part aside for now. We don't need that quite yet. And we are going to use our house. And the first thing that we are gonna do after we've cut around these lines, we're gonna use a pencil to punch little holes at these black spots. So one of the holes we're actually gonna pop our LED through. And the other one we're gonna use as part of our switch. And the reason why we wanna do this is because then when we fold it up, we can hide the circuit, which is always nice. So you'll just take your pencil, and I find it easiest if you put it on the table and then you sort of put your pencil in the middle of that black circle and you can just poke through it just like that.
We're back. I'm curious when our audio cut out. I don't know. Oh, too long ago. Maybe Couldn't have been too long because we had shout outs. So, um, if our audio cut out, it did cut out. So you should be cutting this guy all the way around the piece. You'll have two pieces. You've got your piece that looks like a house, and we've got our piece that is going to be um, our Morse code dictionary, which we can put to the side. And then I punched a hole in the two where the two black holes the two black dots were and that is where we are at and hopefully we didn't miss too much more without audio um, and I'm gonna take this up to my curious George which lets us see things as we go all right so copper tape is a great little highway for electrons to go on and that is how we create our circuits so anywhere we have copper tape electrons can move through it anywhere we have the scotch tape or masking tape, they can't go through it. Electricity does not go through paper unless it's lightning, which would be very, very bad. Our batteries don't have enough energy for that. So we need the copper tape to make the highways. Um, but if we take two pieces of copper tape and we put one down like this and then one down like that, there's actually glue between them. And then the electrons can run on this highway, but they can't really get up through the glue to get onto the next highway. So if this is your first time doing a paper circuit with us, anywhere you see these bins, we actually have to fold the copper tape. We cannot rip it and then start over again. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind. But the first piece that we're gonna do is just a nice straight piece. We're gonna put a straight piece of copper tape from here over this green circle, okay? So it needs to go into that green circle. And you wanna peel your copper tape and then put it down right after you peel it. So I'm gonna peel it a little bit. So it has like a little bit of a Y looking to it. And I'm gonna take this piece and I'm actually going to put it down onto the paper before I take all that white backing off. So I'm gonna stick it down to where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna peel this white backing off and stick it to into that green circle. It needs to make pretty good contact into this green circle. You don't want to end it like right here because then it won't make very good contact with the bottom of our battery. So you really want to extend this into that green circle. That's pretty important. All right, and I like to flatten it out using my thumbnail. Let's just press it down, which is pretty great. All right, so now the next piece, we have a couple of tricks that we're going to have to do. So this one's gonna go straight up, but then it needs to turn and actually go through this hole. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit extra. And I am again gonna peel the tape and I'll show you what happens if you guys are new to doing paper circuits with us. This is why we always peel it and then start sticking it because if we take it all the way off, it does this curly loop-de-loo thing and it like sticks to itself and then it rips or it doesn't get crinkled and you can't undo it. It's just a total pain. So that's why we peel it and stick it at the same time as we're sort of going through it. So what we're gonna do, you're gonna peel it off just a little bit and you're gonna orient it so that it can go straight up. So right now, if I peel this, it's gonna start going this way. If I had it this way, then the copper tape wants to go down. So I wanna make sure that I stick it down so that the copper tape would wanna go straight up. And I'm gonna stick it down like this, right on top of that yellow line and I will come up here. It doesn't matter today if you go off of these lines. That's totally fine for today. And then I need to fold it as I come over. Now remember, I can't cut this and put a new piece. I need to actually fold it. And so the way that you can do that is you can actually fold it backwards like this and then sort of go forwards. Or you could actually just have like some extra copper tape. And I have all this extra right here. You could just press it down and have a big loop-de-loop. -loop. That's totally fine. No big deal for a big loop-de. And then I'm right here and I'm coming in to this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give myself maybe about an inch and that's how much copper tape I need. So I'm gonna rip it right there. And I am going to very gently push this copper tape through that hole. So I have this beautiful hole I made earlier. All right, I'm gonna fold these papers down. 
And I'm gonna take this piece of copper tape and without breaking it, I'm just going to gently put it through the hole. And if you need a bigger hole, which I might need a bigger hole, I'm just gonna push my pencil a little bit more through. And that made my hole much bigger. And now I'm going to stick this copper tape through the hole without ripping it. And the copper tape is coming from this side. I'm actually gonna put it through the hole and loop it over. So right now it's coming through the hole. I'm gonna put it down like this. So it's gonna loop like that and it's gonna loop right over. Just like that. And that's a tricky move. And then I'm gonna press down everywhere to make sure it wants to stay. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side so that when I attach these two pieces, when I connect these two pieces of copper tape, it's actually our switch, and that will let us do the on and off. So again, what I did right here, I'll actually just retape over the whole thing, just so you guys can see it one more time. So I'm gonna go straight up. So I peel it and I align it so that the copper tape's looking like it's gonna go straight up. I'm gonna peel it and stick it down at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna peel and stick. And then I need to bend it. I'm gonna fold it, so I'm going to give myself a little bit extra. And when I get up here, I'm gonna give it a little extra, and I'm going to just put it the tape down the way I want it to go, and then I can just fold the rest of it out. So, kinda of like this. So I folded it, and now I'm just going to Give myself like a maybe about an inch. Doesn't have to be really long, so I have an extra inch here. I'm gonna press this down, and I'm gonna thread that through the hole. It's gonna go through the hole, and it's gonna loop back onto itself. All right, so we're gonna go through the hole. Oops. And if you need to, you can also use like a pencil to thread it through the hole, so you could align it up to the hole like that. And you could gently press on it, and then pull it out the other side. So now that it's through the hole, so it's coming from here, it's through the hole, we're gonna flip it back on itself, just like that, all right? So that will have it just like that, and this is gonna be where our switch is. And then on this side, you can press this down with like a thumbnail. It's a great way to press it down, and that piece is all ready. All right, oh, and I'm sorry, I skipped taping in the battery. Let's tape in our battery. And the way that we're gonna do that, you're gonna tape it in so you can see the letters. So if you look, our battery has one side that has like a plus sign and it, mine says CR2032, lithium battery. It's got some Chinese letters and it says three volts. The other side is looks like a bunch of polka dots. I want the polka dot side to go down onto the paper so I can still see all of that writing. All right, and it's gonna get taped in over that green dot. You don't need a ton of tape. Um, and then one thing to notice though, is we still need to make contact with the top of this battery. So we can't tape over the top completely. We wanna tape along the edges of the battery. So we can tape something like this, where it's gonna have a spot here that can still meet some of the copper tape that we're gonna put in in just a moment. So there is our battery. Sorry, I did not do that in order for you guys. There is our battery that's taped in. So now we need to add this last piece of copper tape and we will be all ready to start testing. Well, we'll be ready to add in our LED, I guess. So I'm gonna measure again how much I think I need of copper tape. I always give myself a little bit extra. I'm going to peel it. And this time when I peel it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna loop it back on itself so I have glue to glue. And that's because I wanna to touch the top of this battery, but I don't wanna to touch the top of the battery with the gluey side, because then the electrons have to go out of the battery straight into glue, and they're like, ugh, they don't go very well. I need this to touch copper, but the bottom of the copper tape is gluey. So what we do is we take a little bit and we just fold it over so it sticks to itself. All right, so now I have this little bit that's not sticky at all. All right, so again, I just take the end and I fold it over so that it sticks to itself, just like that. So now I have this spot that's not sticky. That's the part that I wanna to touch my battery with. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go up, so I'm gonna make it so my copper tape goes up. I'm gonna make sure that this is on the battery like that, and we'll tape it in in just a minute. 
And now I can peel and stick like I was before. And when you get to a corner, you could either bend it backwards and then go forward, which, make, which makes a really nice fold. Or if you're finding that difficult, you give yourself a little extra space and you just press it down in any spot that works that's going along it. And then you can back fold it, which is also nice. All right, so when I get to this hole again, I am going to go through the hole and loop back on itself. And I see I have like a little chunk of paper here. I could just take my scissors and cut that off if I wanted to. I don't think it'll cause a problem at all. I'm just gonna press it down though. And I'm gonna give myself, just like last time, some extra space on this copper tape, like maybe an inch or so. And then I can rip it. So I'm going to now thread this through the hole and it's gonna go the other direction. So it's gonna come back on itself and it will go the other way than the other piece of tape. So if it gets stuck like this in the hole, you can just take your pencil and gently push it through until you can grab a little piece on the other side. Like that. There we go. And when you grab the piece, you're just gonna pull it through the hole. So notice it hasn't ripped yet. I'm gonna pull it through the hole. It came in this direction. So it's gonna go through the hole and then it's gonna go back onto itself. And that will end up being the other direction of the other piece. So we have one here and one there and we have this beautiful gap which will end up being our switch. All right. And those two should not touch each other. They should not be touching, yeah. If they're touching each other then our switch won't really work because it'll be always on. Okay. And I'm going to come back over here now and I'm going to take another piece of my masking tape or my scotch tape, so not my copper tape. And now I'm going to tape this down because if this comes up off the battery, I'm not connected to my circuit. And it doesn't stick to the battery because remember we sort of flipped it over so that it wouldn't be sticky. That was sort of the goal. So I'm just going to take a piece, a little piece of tape, and I'm going to tape this down to my battery. All right. And that's because I want it to stick to the top of the battery. If you want to, you can put more than one piece of tape. No big deal. You just need to make sure you've got battery the non-sticky copper tape, and then your masking tape. And we can cover that all up like that. Beautiful. All right. We are almost to the part where our circuit is done. But you might be saying, Dr. Erica, what about the light? That's the next part. So our LED is going to fit through this hole that we punched down here. But you need to make sure that, remember, we have a short leg and then a slightly longer leg. So we got one short leg here, one slightly longer. The short leg comes off that goes straight to the battery. So this side is the short leg right here. So I want to align my LED. I'm going to point it into my book right now because it's going to go through this hole. I'm going to take my short leg. It's going to go like this. It's going to go straight to the side. And my long leg is going to go to the side, but then I kind of want it to go up. So I've got now my short leg going straight over to the side and my long leg is going to come up. All right, and I can pop this through that little hole. I can push it through the hole, the LED part, just like that. And I'm gonna tape these legs down. I need to make sure that when I do, the legs are touching the copper tape. All right, so when I tape it, I don't wanna tape it like this where the legs are on the paper. I definitely need to tape it onto the copper tape. And you really want these legs as close as possible to the tape. I'm actually gonna pull my LED through a little bit more. I'm just gonna tug on it a little bit and that way it'll give me a little bit better. I want it to touch that copper tape really good. If you are worried, I wanna show you a great trick on how to connect these legs a little bit better if you ever get worried about them connecting. And one thing I like to do is you take a little piece of the masking tape and instead of just taping the leg down, which you can totally do, you can take a little piece of copper tape and you can stick it to that masking tape so you have copper tape that's facing towards you. So this is my sticky part of the masking tape and then this is not sticky. It's just straight copper. I can put that so it touches both the leg and the other line of copper tape. So I can put that on. It's gonna be a little tricky doing it on a book. You can put it on just like this and that gives you a little bit better of a connection. 
And then once you put that leg on, you want to press really hard on that taped leg just to get really good connection. All right. And so I'll show you that trick again. You take a little bit of scotch tape. So this is the sticky side right here. And we take a piece of copper tape and you don't even need to peel the white backing off of the copper tape. All right, and we're gonna just stick this copper tape to that masking tape, just like that. So you have a nice little piece of copper. Um, you could also put a little piece of foil here if you didn't have enough copper tape. And now I'm gonna tape it so that I know that this long leg touches both this really long line and that copper tape. And then I'll press it into place. So we'll just tape this piece down like that. And we're gonna press it really, really hard. It's always good to press nice and hard. That just gives you a little bit of a better connection because normally when we make circuits that we want to be really good and secure, we actually use a soldering iron. But a soldering iron is basically you're actually melting metal. So it's kind of risky in terms of safety. So this is a great way and we just find different tricks to help us. So now we just have our moment to test. And to test, I need to finish connecting the circuit. So I go from the top of the battery into a hole, which doesn't do me much. But if I connected these, I could jump over here, go into the LED, and then back into the battery. So I would have a full circuit. And we can test that by just putting a piece of copper tape over it. So my copper tape, I'm putting it face down over the gap and you can notice that my LED goes on on the other side. I could flip it over and I can check over here. So I'm gonna take my piece of copper tape. It's got the white backing on still. And if I make sure I connect these two pieces, my LED lights up. And that is what's gonna end up being our Morse code piece because I can now sort of tap this and it turns on and I can hold it and it'll stay on for my long or I could do short so I could signal S O and S because S is three short ones. So I could say save our ship and that is nice and easy to do it with. Now granted I have this rainbow one that sort of flashes on its own which might not be the greatest for true Morse code but it is pretty fun for what we're doing today. Now you could tape one side. If we tape both sides our circuit will always be on. So we really just want to tape one side of this on. I'm going to take off this little guy and we'll just take a little piece of masking tape. I like using masking tape on taping these extra things on mainly because it secures better than copper tape. Like, I mean, technically you could put a piece of copper tape to secure this in and it wouldn't be a problem, but I don't know. Sometimes that just makes it feel a little more tricky. So now I have this piece where if I just press right here, I am on. So what I need to do next is I need to fold up my box. So I'm going to fold all of these um, dotted lines up towards me because they're going to fold so that they hide things. So I'm going to fold this guy here and you want to be careful like I just popped out my LED a little bit pressing on it the way I was folding. You want to be a little careful about that. So we're going to fold this piece down like that and we're going to do the same thing we're going to fold this top piece down and when we have these little triangle pieces we'll end up getting a lovely little wedge and again if you want you can really press right here which is where my legs are at to make sure it all is in good we can always test it by pressing that. So now I have this piece that looks like this and I'm gonna fold these little triangles in. And when I do that, I'm gonna be able to make a nice little wedge machine. I'll tape it in place. So I'm gonna fold this piece here and I'll fold this one down as well. You might be able to see it starting to get formed. So now I've got like this little wedge that I can tape in place. So the way that I'll tape it is I'll just add a little bit of tape onto that wedge piece first. The side that has the switch is gonna be your top. So this is gonna be my top because it's got my switch taped in. 
And then this will be my bottom. So when I tape, I'm actually gonna tape onto the bottom. So I'm just putting a little piece of tape onto that wedge piece. And then I'm going to align the bottom up with it. And I will just fold over and tape that little piece in place. Just like that. I'm gonna do it on the same, on the, the same way on the other side. I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and I will add it to the edge of this triangle just like that so this is the sticky side and I can fold it down and I can fold this tape under just like that so now I have this cool little box where whoop, I broke it that's totally fine though those things happen so if it breaks what you're gonna want to do like I still have a hole here I can fix this I can press on my LED legs with a pencil. I'm just going to press where those pieces are at and see if that is the problem, which it could be. Might have been something when I bent it. Might be my battery. We'll find out in just a minute. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Yep, it was where my battery was. So I just pressed right, my battery's right in here. So I just took the pencil and I pressed on the inside against the battery so I could put some pressure on it. It looks like when I taped it, some of the tape that was taping down that top piece kind of came off. There we go. So now I am working just like I want it to be. So if yours was working and after you fold it, it doesn't, you can just take a little pencil in here and you can press on where the legs are right around the LED, right? And that pencil gives you a spot to put pressure and then you can press on the battery too to make a better connection. And then the last thing we need to do is we just need to tape in our little instructions on how to do Morse code, so what each letter is. You just put that on top and we'll tape that piece in as well. So, just need, I'll just cut one of these pieces of tape in half because I don't even need a whole thick piece. And we'll put this in here and I will be ready to send some awesome encrypted messages, because we probably don't want to send real messages out our window so people can see, but I could send encrypted messages using this and my cipher wheel out our window. And that is our awesome little Morse code machine. So I could say, hello, I would look at H. H is four circles, so a circle is a short one, so one, two, three, four. And then I wait, and then E is just one, one, and I wait. And then L is short, long, short, short. So short, long, short, short. And then I do that again, short, long, short, short. And then O is three longs, long, long, long. And that would be me sending hello and somebody outside could see that through my bedroom window, which is why I also wanna send it as an encrypted message so that somebody else who was watching me thinking I was a spy would just get a whole bunch of gobbledygook and they wouldn't get very much good information out of me. And that is our fun little Morse code machine. Then you can decorate it and it's beautiful. I love that this one hides the circuit so you can't see it. It makes it kind of look a little bit more professional instead of some of our other things that you can't, where it's like you see all of the circuit stuff. It's kind of a fun thing. I also really like that it kind of like is at this angle that I made it so that you can press it and it's, you can see it real nice, which is kind of cool. And this could pack up into maybe Naomi's mom's book. Maybe this would fit inside with the other spy gear that we've had, which would be pretty epic. That would be amazing. And that is it. That is our awesome little Morse code machine. Sorry, I've got to slide to the side to move my leg a little. All right, do we have questions? Let's see. We have George joined us, so I bet theirs is done. Ooh, yeah. Um, They're like circuit masters. Callie, if you guys are behind, we are going to be... Yeah, we'll be redoing everything in Zoom so you can get cut off. Yeah, if you have trouble or anything like that, we will be in Zoom having lunch today together. So if you're in Zoom, just be prepared. You know, you can show me your circuit and I will look at it and we'll try to troubleshoot our circuits together. And usually it works. I mean, we've gotten pretty much everybody's circuits working. Okay. Um, some people, yeah, some people have had a little bit more trouble than others, but sometimes it's just luck of the draw on how that day goes for you. I do suggest if you're finding you're having a ton of trouble, sometimes it's easier to just start over. And I've done that with a lot of circuits, like when we did paper airplanes and I do summer camps. Sometimes kids will come to me with the 
perfectly wired up paper airplane. I won't even have an idea about why it's not working. And so I'm like, let's just start from the get-go. Let's give it another shot. And it usually always works the second time for whatever reason, because I usually won't be able to find a problem with the first one. But sometimes if you've tried everything, you've troubleshooted as much as you can, just printing it off and trying again also works. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this fun little project. So if you do need help, you can go over to Zoom right now. We will be shifting over that way so we can say goodbye to our YouTube friends. Um, and make sure that you send us pictures of you with your new spy gear doing awesome spy-tastic things and we can share them with you guys. Next week, we'll be starting on Tuesday and we can share them in our pre-show. And next week, we're going to do a lot of cool things with the electricity. So you're going to need a 9-volt battery and hopefully a little battery hat for your 9-volt. But if not, we'll figure out a way to still make it work. But we're going to feel electricity. We're going to split water into gases next week. It's going to be amazing. And our circuit project doesn't even use copper tape next week. What? We have never done a circuit project without copper tape. How is that possible? Oh, not going to use wires either. What? We're going to use just a pencil and an LED and our 9 volt battery. That's it. And you're going to make a circuit. How cool is that? I'm super excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right, so we're gonna say goodbye to our YouTube audience. Make sure you subscribe, you share all of the fun science we're doing, the more the merrier. And if you're not over on Zoom because you don't have the Zoom link, you can find that at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And you can support us at as little as a dollar a week for awesome sun fi fun science programming. And hopefully we'll be doing some fun stuff throughout the summer, so we'll see what happens there. And I think without further ado, we'll see you guys in Zoom today. Have a good one, friends. B.